Hello, my name is Ed Hughes. My presentation is on inscribed angles. Inscribed angles are not uh, something you're likely to encounter every day. However, it provides an opportunity to exercise some logic and developing your logical skills is something very valuable. Let's start out with a definition of an angle. An angle is a measurement. And the measurement is how far do we have to rotate one side of the angle to coincide with the other side. That's what we're going to be working with. This is a central angle. The vertex is in the center of the circle. This arc subtends this angle. What that means is that the two sides of the angle extend from the center to the endpoints of the arc. In the case of an inscribed angle, we don't use the center, but we use any other point on the circumference of the circle. So this is the arc that subtends the angle. It can be from this end point of the arc to here and this end point of the arc to here or it could be to here or any other point. Regardless of what point put on the circle, this is the arc that subtends the inscribed angle. Here is a circle and I've shown a central angle and an inscribed angle. The central angle has the vertex in the center of the circle. The inscribed angle has it on a point on the circumference of the circle. This is the arc that subtends both angles. Central angle A, inscribed angle B. And here is the rule that goes with that. The central angle subtended by an arc is twice, twice the inscribed angle subtended by the same arc. Written with math symbols, we can say angle A, which is a central angle, is equal to twice angle B, which is an inscribed angle. Now, there is one useful thing that you might want to remember about an inscribed angle. And uh, let me draw the picture and then we will prove the rule. Let's draw a circle. And a line, which is the diameter of the circle, passing through the center. And this line here can be considered an angle, a central angle, this is the vertex, of 180 degrees. That means that this arc, which is half the circle, is 180 degrees. Now, according to that rule that said that the inscribed angle is half the central angle, this central angle being 180 degrees, let's pick any point over here, pick this point, for example, and draw the angle subtended by this arc. That means we use the endpoints. Boom. Boom. Now that certainly looks like 90 degrees, but in math we don't go by appearances. We have to prove everything. So, what do we have to work with? We don't have any idea what this length is. It could be any length, depending on where we put the point. Same here. We do know, however, that this radius from here to here is the same as this radius. Okay? And we can draw another radius. All three radius are the same. Now, if we look at this, we see here we have an isosceles triangle, which means that this angle A is the same as this angle A. And since this is a triangle, or because this is a triangle, 
the angle, all three angles, this angle, this angle, and this angle, must add up to 180 degrees. So this angle is 180 minus the two other angles. Now we can do the same thing for this isosceles triangle. Angle B, angle B, and this will be 180 minus 2B. Now we also know that the diameter is a straight line, so these two angles, this angle and this angle, have to add up to 180 degrees. So let's write that down. 180 degrees is equal to this angle, minus 2B, plus this angle, 180 minus 2A. Now let's subtract 180 from both sides. Gone, gone. Okay, we'll say zero, let's write it out. Equals, let's uh, put the one and separate, separate the order here. Let's put 180 over here. Minus 2B, minus 2A. Well, let's divide through by two. We get zero equals 90, minus 2B, minus, oops, minus B, minus A. Let's add A and B to both sides. We have A plus B is equal to 90. When we added the B over here, this went away. When we added the A over here, this went away. And we have A plus B equals 90. A plus B is 90 degrees. So we can conclude that given a diameter, we can pick any point on the circle and create an inscribed angle using the two points where the diameter intersects the circle and the, and the inscribed angle will be a right triangle. All right, let's show that the inscribed angle is indeed half of the central angle where the, uh, for the same arc that subtends both angles. So we draw a circle. An inscribed angle where this is the arc that subtends that inscribed angle. And yeah, let's call this A. Here's the center. Here's the central angle, let's call it B. And we want to show that 2A is equal to B. Well, how do we go about this? Well, what do we have? We have a radius here, a radius here. Uh, we can draw one more radius over here. All right. That's one isosceles triangle. We have an isosceles triangle over here. So let's fill in some of the angles. Let's call this angle X. That's angle X because of the Sosceles triangle. So this angle here, for this triangle, the um, angles must add up to 180. We have uh, two X here. So this angle has to be 180 minus two X. Now we have this other isosceles triangle right here, and uh, let's call this angle here Y, Y, all right. And 
the angles, this angle, this angle, and this angle here have to, has to add up to 180. So let's write that down. 180 is going to equal 2y plus b plus this angle. 180 minus 2x. Alright, let's subtract 180 from both sides. Take care of that. And let's write that. 2y plus b minus 2x. Let's bring these terms over to this side. I'll we'll do that by subtracting 2y and adding 2x to both sides. So we, over here we get 2x minus 2y is equal to b. Now, here we see here, uh, let's factor the 2 out here, x minus y equals b. And we look over here, x was this angle. y is this angle. So if we subtract y from x, we're left with a. So we have 2a equals b. Exactly what we set out to prove. That b, the central angle, is twice the inscribed angle, where we, both the central angle and the inscribed angle are subtended by the same arc.